Welcome to another special edition of Inside Series from Comic-Con. We are here with the cast of Once Upon a Time for the purposes of our listeners, who, just so they can uh, recognize your voice right away. I was wondering if you wouldn't mind saying your name and your character so they, you won't have to say it every time now. Uh, I'm Jared Gilmore. I play Henry. Josh, Prince Charming. Uh, I'm Colin, and I play Captain Hook. <coughs> Jennifer, and I play Emma Swan. Hi, I'm Lana Perea, and I play... <laughs> Hi, I'm Lana Perea, and I play the evil queen, uh, Queen Regina. <laughs> Hi, Emily, and I play Belle. Hi, I'm Rebecca Maida, <laughs> and I play Zelina slash the Wicked Witch. Oh, and she's got the voice. She does, she has a good <laughs> voice. Um, it's, it's been such an extraordinary run for the show, um, especially for a high-concept show. Can you remember way back in the beginning when the show launched... Um, what did the producers tell you when developing the journey for Storybrooke? Did they they say get ready? There's going to be loads of characters every new season. We're gonna, what kind? Oh, you're all shaking. No, what was the pitch? No, no. 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 the pitch was it was going to take six years to break the curse. <laughs> they said really. They literally said six years. Well, I think they the pitched the something show. different to every one of us. To be honest with you. <laughs> I really do. I think they intentionally do that to throw us off and to so we don't expect. So we're not kind of playing the story that hasn't been told yet. So we just stay in the moment. And I think they tell us different things. I really do. And I sometimes think yeah. that what they tell us doesn't actually stick. I but think, yeah. that's, that's, that's what keeps it interesting. I don't actually remember what they told me, but I, I remember thinking that that would be the crux of the entire season, or yeah. series, mm -hmm. breaking that curse in, uh, that they broke in the first season. Hmm. So you never thought you'd be sitting here six Years Did you? Later. No, of course not. No way. I don't <laughs> think you ever think that. No, no, no. you can never. No. I mean, things are no. so precarious these days on television. You never know, and you never assume. So we all feel very lucky. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It's pretty incredible for to be season six. It's amazing. It's pretty yeah, exciting. it is. Yeah, and to do twenty three episodes a year, mm -hmm. and it's six season is pretty remarkable. Yeah. I don't know how the writers do it. <laughs> 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 so much to come up with. Yeah, it is. Yeah. As, as the show's gone on with time, um, did you start to ever worry that the, the mythology would be so deep that it would be hard to um, attract new viewers to the show? Um, I don't know if that was like a specific concern, but I think that we realized, especially when they brought the Frozen characters on, we realized how possible it was to bring on new viewers. Mm -hmm. um, that by introducing characters that were familiar and characters that reached a different generation of viewers that we were... We actually had the capacity to do that in a way that maybe we didn't realize before that. Is there a common misconception about the show from people who aren't fans already? I think sometimes uh, I get, when I go back home, uh, oh, that's that kid's show that you want. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, because people think about fair, they don't realize just, you know, I mean, this show can be really dark at times, you know, and... Uh, I mean, I think we rip people's hearts out of their yeah. chest. That's yeah. pretty dark. <laughs> I think that that's probably the... I mean, if you're going to nitpick a, some sort of misconception, that would, for me, that's probably it. But um, Anyone who says yeah. that has never seen it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. basically. Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then they show it to their children, and they're like, well, why did I do that? Yeah, they're that? like, oh, <laughs> that was way too Maybe young for them. Maybe ready for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did that. <laughs> <laughs> but there are... You, you do have kitties yeah. watching, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. but that's one of the great things about the show, though, is that it's, it's it, one of the few shows, and I mean, at least I, I hear a lot of... Fans telling me, you know, it's really brought us together as a family, or it's a fan, it's a show that you know we watch with our kids, or we watch when we get together for dinner, or it's something that no adults for every age, and kids, it? Yeah. and yeah, it definitely needs to be a, of a certain age, though. I feel like mm -hmm. anything under ten is mm -hmm. a little bit precarious. It's yeah. like, mm -hmm. you know, kids get more scared of things than we realize, and I realize that with mm -hmm. my niece and my nephew. You know, it's like we kind of take it for granted, like, oh, that's not that scary, and then a little kid watching it is mm -hmm. terrified. Well, the, the, the creators of the show are scared of me and Lana. <laughs> <laughs> Their mom tried to take a, a selfie with me earlier, and they just they ran away. The kids. I'm like, I'm not yeah. really wicked. I'm lovely in real life. They're but terrified. she's sick. She's like, so many times. They, yeah, they're, they're terrified. The twins have Isn't met so they're many young, times. They're six. Mm -hmm. Well, but this show started, I think, when they were four. They've been traumatized yeah. so by they've the been evil traumatized, So it's <laughs> even though they've been to my house for birthday parties, it's like nope. that is a scary lady. Yeah. I'm not getting any <laughs> yeah. Run! Yeah. Run! But Run fairy, ta fairy, tale fairy tales are scary. scary. They're yeah, dark, they are. and yeah. they were meant to be lessons and meant to mm -hmm. really make an impact on kids. So that's true. I, I think, think Jared's still too young to watch. <laughs> <laughs> How old were your kids when you showed it to them? Uh, I have twins, and they were eight. 
Wow. And the ten year old was good. Yeah. Mm. The eight year olds were like, uh, I'm I feel not, like I'm turning this off. Age. Ten is a good age. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the eight year olds yeah. were a little. It was a little much. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Wait, do you run with your villainous side because you're in red leather and you're <laughs> in leopard skin today? So do yes. you really work it? Well, uh, we're just playing ourselves, basically. Um, <laughs> Type past. <laughs> I, um, Maybe that's why they're scared. Right. Right. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I just like. I, I mean, I you thought, wear your red leather well, I have to say. Thank you. I just <laughs> thought it was a good, you know, <laughs> clean dress. It like, is. It is, for sure. For Comic-Con. Well, because we're dealing with fairy tale characters over the years, can you, can you look back at, like, the nuttiest scenes you've ever had to do, and you're like, God, that was just so crazy. <laughs> That's <laughs> daily. <laughs> is that daily? Is it what is that is literally daily. Yeah. 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 If you really break it down into what we're trying to make real, it's <laughs> daily. We act with the air. Yeah. Often. yeah. We green use screen, our imagination, screen. which is actually fun, because you kind of revert back to your childlike mind, where you have to create the things that aren't there and react to them and yeah. pretend that they're real so it's it's fun you're like exercising that part of your brain again mm-hmm. yeah I mean I've like I, I had a scene that never actually made it to air where I was talking to Dorothy and I had to talk to my monkey poof her out do something to the dog to Toto make something else get get a thing prick her finger she fell down there was but I'm literally just flailing around because nothing was really happening I'm like I feel ridiculous <laughs> and then you watch it and you're like, it looks amazing. I'm a yeah. badass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah when you actually watch the show, you're like, I'm amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very good. But on the day, you're like, oh, oh, pff, I find it's not a, it's not so much when we're acting the scenes. I find it's when you have to go in and do the ADR for where you're being thrown across the room by a <laughs> some sort of beast, <laughs> and then you're like. Oh, ah, yeah. Like, but we never it's it, it's not fully rendered at that stage so it's like you just see this cardboard thing and there's a guy going oh I will kill you like this and it's on like yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. oh yeah when it's someone else's voice yeah. oh yeah. in it's place of yours yeah <laughs> that's pretty funny so you guys are in 190 countries is that right yeah, yeah. that's right wow. you probably know so yeah. have you, you what's crazy. the have you traveled overseas with the show? And what's the craziest yes. fan reaction overseas? Brazil is yeah, bonkers. Brazil. Yeah, Brazil. Oh, yeah? So We're so huge in Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> it's massive. It's, it's fantastic. I mean, they yeah. lose yeah. their minds. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. We're yeah. like One Direction when we go there. We can't walk yeah. down the street. Yeah. It's amazing for it's the ego. It's amazing. So it passionate. Is. So you're all yeah. moving to Brazil? Yes. Yeah. 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 Come to Rio. It's great. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Come for the Olympics, stay for Once Upon a Time. <laughs> but the, the fans are very, like very fervent. They're very passionate. They're very committed and and loyal to the mm-hmm. show and to mm-hmm. us. And um, and I think, like, ultimately the show really is about hope. Like, that's, like, the theme throughout, mm-hmm. I find. And that's important, especially now. The world <laughs> is now. What's happening. It's, we need a lot of hope. It, you meet these fans and they, you know, have really compelling stories about how our show has impacted their lives through all different stages, through illnesses, through deaths, through breakups, depression. through depression, mm-hmm. suicidal thoughts, and how this show has given them so much hope. And, you know, they're like, they tell us all the time, we're, you know, we, I don't know how we would have been able to get through things if it weren't for Once Upon a Time. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. So it, it gives mm-hmm. them like, yeah. it's like an anchor for them. You know, they all connect with one another via social media but also like here at Comic Con when mm-hmm. they get together and they have this this common denominator and it's really inspired inspiring and in, uh, and also continues to inspire art which I find fascinating with the fan fiction mm-hmm. and all the you know we the have art, yeah. art like yeah, paintings mm-hmm. that are constantly mm-hmm. I mean it's just amazing wow. what's come out of the show. It's cool and it's nice to hear about people that have yeah like you sort of started to say bonded over the show and become yeah. friends because of yeah. you know whether it be on Facebook or whatever once it counts and stuff. yeah you know, it's, like just, it. it's really, really cool to be a part of something yeah. that is so inspiring mm-hmm. yeah. and in a positive way right. it's well, so positive well it's got to be the whole the the archetypes of fairy tales and yes. how those are so entrenched for generations and generate I mean they've been around forever so they have such a core with all cultures and that it translates so well. I mean, it just speaks, mm-hmm. to, I think it speaks to that too. Yeah, yeah. definitely. It's so interesting. One more question I'll let you go. What, what do you think is the most unappreciated thing about the show, especially around Emmy time? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a I love their facial question. expression <laughs> of that question. That, yeah. was, that was aggressive. <laughs> I, I like it. Eduardo <laughs> Castro, I think What's Eduardo up? Castro deserves an Emmy. He's been nominated many times, but he hasn't won one and the costumes are phenomenal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's his turn it now. It is his turn. I think people don't realize, and I, I mean, I'm not saying this in, in the context of Emmys or anything like that. I just don't think people realize what it takes for the writing team and Eddie and Adam to really get to the bottom of the storytelling. You know, I mean, they're crossing over all these fairy tales and characters from literature and, 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 and they weave them all together and they're keeping it all straight and they're they're doing it in a way that has this sort of Joseph Campbell-esque right. vibe to it where there's a mythology that runs much deeper and a psychology that runs much deeper and I, they don't do anything on accident, you know, and so um, it's something that I think is is so tricky and could be so poorly done and they do such a great job of it. So I think sometimes... Um, you know, we do have really passionate fans and, and it's amazing, but I don't know that people necessarily take a step back and go like, wow, what does it really take for the writers to, to really piece this all together and really build this from the ground up, you know? Or even collectively to do 23 episodes and to do what we do with all the magic and, you know, the, the costumes, like the costume department, how they put out those costumes as quickly as they do. I mean, there's so many people involved. There's like 350 people that work on this show. And that but cable TV get to have like a yeah. huge hiatus and plan out ten episodes. Exactly. They're going to be on Netflix or who? Or they get three weeks Chill to out. do one episode. But right. with you network like television days. is underrated yeah, because they yeah. have to they have to bang out twenty two episodes in a really short amount of time. Mm-hmm. There's certain things you can't say and can't do. And cable is amazing, and I watch a lot of it too. But they have so much more artistic freedom, you know. What's that? What are you guys laughing about back Do the there? women do most of the talking on this show? That's <laughs> <laughs> what so I said banging out, isn't it? No, no, no. no. I, I'm just a quiet teenager in the corner. I know, Ger- Ger- Gerardo's totally... You know, they're gonna Colin hate you. has something to say. <laughs> he uh, does. No, I don't. Well, Colin, Colin, what is it? Colin's tired. Colin's tired. <laughs> do you, Colin and Josh and I have had two hours of sleep, so we're, we're passing into like delirium and <laughs> exhaustion at the same you time. You spoke of Adam and Eddie, Eddie the, 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 the executive producers. Do you think they know how to end the show? Do you think they have their Eddie and Eddie planned? I do. Do you, are you, are you thinking knows. that, or do you actually know? I you know? Do. Oh, I don't actually know, but I think they, they know. do. Mm-hmm. Do you think one of you all dies? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Probably. Maybe. Yeah. I've yeah. died three times. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't mean much. I've died. Most right. pe- yeah, there's a lot of people that have died and come back or I've died. died in half. I mean, Bell's in a box right now. I'm in a box. Bell's in a box. But there's hope. Right. There's yeah. still hope. So awesome. yeah. There's, there's hope, hope within the box. There's always right. hope on Once Upon Prince a Time. in a coma. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, guys, on that note, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you.